Live from the Business Radio X studio inside Renaissance Bank, the bank that specializes in understanding you. It's time for North Fulton Business Radio. And hello again, everyone. Welcome to another edition of North Fulton Business Radio. I'm John Ray, and folks, we are live broadcasting from inside Renaissance Bank on Windward Parkway in beautiful Alpharetta. If you are tired of the big bank experience, and you know what I mean, computer-generated voices, 1-800 numbers, um, that feeling that they really don't want to talk to you live about your small business needs, then I've got a suggestion for you. It involves going to renaissancebank.com, finding their local office, and uh, giving them a call. What you're invariably going to find, I found this with me and my clients, is that live people actually answer the phone or you get live voicemails and they'll call you back. It's amazing. And, and they'll be delighted to sit down and talk about with you about your business needs and uh, do that in a personal way. And I think what you'll find is Renaissance is big enough to handle pretty much any need you can throw at them small enough to do it in that personal way. Renaissance bank understanding you member FDIC. And we've got two great guests today, uh, Ryan McShane from the aforementioned Renaissance Bank. He's with the Commercial Banking Group of Renaissance. And we've also got Jimmy Hilliard. And Jimmy is uh, with Swimtime Pools. Ryan, we're going to start with you. Ryan McShane, Renaissance Bank. Welcome. Hi, John. Thank you for having me. Yeah, great to have you. It's good to be here. Yeah, thank you. So let's uh, chat about you and Renaissance Bank and how, you, how you're serving the, the market out out of Renaissance. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, and it's a, it's an interesting market right now for sure. <laughs> but uh, we've we've certainly we're kind of in a I guess if you will a, a post COVID world. Mm. Um, uh, it 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 seems like uh, we've we've had a resurgence here lately. But uh, but again, business has has certainly changed since this time last year. Um, and in my role on the commercial side of things, uh, definitely seeing. Uh, more activity, uh, more loan demand. Um, we're seeing a lot more clients willing to uh, take out money to uh, establish liquidity, to be acquisitive, uh, whether they want to buy a business. We've seen some of that. We've seen uh, uh, definitely expansion opportunities for buildings, for um, manufacturers. So it's kind of all around the board. It's, it just seems like with the economies opening up, uh, business is opening up as well for us. And you're with the commercial banking group. Uh, talk about the types of businesses that you work with. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So um, I, I work primarily with the small business owner. Uh, it could be a uh, uh, from one to maybe a hundred employees is mm. typically the 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 companies I work with, and I'd say probably the average is twenty or less employees. So I think the uh, the the small business owner. Um, and uh, uh, they will typically look for um, uh, buying equipment for their business. They'll look for buying uh, sometimes a, a new building for their business. Um, sometimes they just need a seasonal working capital line of credit for their business. Um, and occasionally uh, there will be an opportunity where, where a client might uh, have an opportunity to expand into a new line of business or to acquire someone else's business that's that's uh aging out of the 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 industry or or something like that so we can help them with that financial service i, I noticed in the show notes ryan you've been with renaissance since 2015 so that's about six years uh, that's almost an eternity for a banker these days i mean uh. <laughs> bankers have, have been moving around a lot but you've you've uh stayed at renaissance why renaissance for you and well, your, your career yeah, yeah. Uh, Renaissance a great, great company, uh, great employer. Uh, the the company itself uh, really tries to take care of four key constituents, and the first is, and our CEO Mitch Waycaster always says this: employees. Mm. Um, employees are our greatest asset. That's that's what he always says, and uh, they they put the money where the mouth mouth is, so to speak. Um, so um, really thankful for for great leadership with the bank. Um, the second constituent is customers, mm. uh, because customers are the reason we exist. And 
And our leadership does a great job with giving us the tools we need to serve our customers, but also um, not putting unreasonable goals on us uh, that that might even drive unethical behavior. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I'm sure you, we've we've all read the reports of of um, you know certain institutions where where things like that can take place. Um, and thankfully, there's none of that at Renaissance. We really uh, try to understand the needs of our clients, and that's our slogan, understanding you. Um, the third constituent is our communities, because it just makes sense to uh, work well, to play well, to serve well in the communities that you live. Mm-hmm. And then the last one's our shareholders. Um, and we believe that if we take care of the first three, the, the shareholder piece will just take care of itself. Terrific. Ryan McShane is with us, folks. He's with the Commercial Banking Group uh, of Renaissance Bank uh, here in the North Atlanta area, uh, North Fulton area. Um, so, Ryan, let, let's um, let's talk a little bit about, about liquidity. So, there's a lot of liquidity in the marketplace. Um, maybe for those that don't know what that means, let's let's define that, right? And and talk about where it's coming from and why that's important. Yeah, absolutely. So just uh, let's define liquidity. Like you said, uh, when I think of liquidity, I think of cash. Mm -hmm. I think of cash reserves. It is cash in your pocket that is ready to be spent. Uh, It's a rainy day fund. It's it's your savings, essentially. It's cash that you can easily get to um, and spend or or use in the case of an emergency. Um, Of course, uh, it has substantially increased um, across all businesses, liquidity has. Um, and I think that's in large part due to all the stimulus programs we've seen since last year. Um, so businesses and individuals alike with the, you think about the stimulus checks um, that have gone directly to um, individuals and families. You think about the different um different stimulus programs like the Paycheck Protection Program, Mm -hmm. the SBA's Emergency Injury Disaster Loan Program, EIDL. That one's a tongue twister. Easy for you to say. Yeah, I've said it (laughs) enough. But uh, but, uh, these programs have have certainly increased uh, clients and even banks' balance sheets. Mm. Um, uh, Banks today, us, and you can talk to any other bank, their, their deposits have soared because this liquidity has increased. Um, so for some, uh, that, that's been a, uh, for most actually, it's, it's been a great thing um, for other, and, and they've even be, been able to um, just kind of put a little extra cash into savings uh, mm-hmm. for others. Um, you know, and you think of those, those industries that are the hardest hit, uh, the, the restaurant industry, the hotel, hospitality industry, those industries desperately needed that that liquidity um, and went through it very quickly, um, and in some cases needed more help. So um, it, it's really just a different experience for depending on the client. But there's certainly a lot of liquidity um, out in the market right now. Let, let's talk a little bit about you mentioned PPP and EIDL. Uh, I'm not going to try to say all that out like <laughs> you did, <laughs> but. Um, uh, let's talk about some of the issues that are there. I mean, those programs are pretty much either have wound down or are winding down. Yep. Talk about the issues and what you're talking to your business owner clients about with these programs right now. Yeah, uh, we'll start with PPP, uh, Paycheck Protection Program. That that was started last year. Uh, there were um, three rounds of it, technically, um, and businesses had the opportunity to get up to two Paycheck Protection Program loans, which basically covered payroll costs and other costs, but it was sized by taking two and a half months of payroll. Um, And it was totally forgivable as long as they followed the program rules. Uh, Most of my clients um, had that loan forgiven with uh, no issues. Um, Only had one client that, that did have to repay some and um, and it was it really no fault of his own. It was just kind of uh, miscalculated on the front end for how to size it. Mm-hmm. But um, so I really haven't seen a lot of issues with that program. Um, it, it definitely was difficult to roll out. Uh, no, no question about that. Um, it was kind of like uh, flying a plane while 
building the plane at the same time. But um, at forty thousand feet too, yeah, not, not yeah. ten feet off the ground, right? It, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, it, in fact, I remember the first weekend that it, that PPP rolled out. Uh, we had a conference call as a bank because it rolled out on a Thursday or Friday, and we had a conference call on Sunday morning over Zoom, which was brand new. You know, everyone started getting on Zoom. Sure. And the conference call uh, dropped on everyone because. Churches all over the nation were using Zoom at the same time, and it <laughs> right. crashed. So, right. so we normally don't do Sunday morning conference calls, but that that was a, a situation where the need kind of arose. Sure. But, um, anyways, uh, so Paycheck Protection Program, uh, the the big thing I would tell the business community with that right now is if you haven't applied for loan forgiveness. Now is the time to do that, and mm. the reason is if if you've just get, if you got your first loan, um, the payments should be starting on that about now. Uh, you you do have to make payments if the loan is not forgiven. Mm-hmm. So it's it some some uh, I'm afraid some business owners may have just kind of uh, uh, get it and forget it, uh, right. but that that is the wrong strategy. So so need to need to go ahead and get that application in, uh, get it forgiven as quickly as possible so that you won't have to make any loan payments on that. Um, the next thing that, that we'd mentioned is the, the EIDL and, uh, the, uh, that, that's been a good program too. Um, the SBA, uh, really gave out, in my opinion, a lot of money through that program. Um, in, in some cases to, to clients, uh, you know, a hundred thousand, hundred fifty thousand dollars where they, they really didn't have to show too, too much information to get that kind of a loan. Uh, great loan terms, 3.75% over 30 years. First, uh, the, the biggest pitfall with that that I see clients is most often they didn't need it, but they took it just in case. Right. And, and, and you can understand that. Sure. Uh, and that's fine. It's just uh, what they didn't realize is that the first 12 months of interest is deferred. Um, and then I think the SBA even extended that a little bit, maybe another year. Um, but the interest is still accruing. Mm. And I, I came across a, a, a client the other day who, uh, realized this mistake. He, he, he didn't think interest was accruing mm. and, uh, he took, he took quite, he, he had several businesses, took several EIDL loans and ended up paying $30,000 of interest that he didn't think he was going to have to pay a oh, while wow. so uh so if if you think that money's just sitting in your bank interest free and you're not paying anything on it you need to think again and and just kind of reassess if if if, if you want to keep it no you're just going to pay some interest on it and that's sure. fine if you can if you can swing that but just want to know your options sure sure ryan mcshane is with us folks he's with the commercial banking group of renaissance bank uh here in the north fulton for scythe um area so, Ryan, talk a little bit about, I guess, what you're seeing in the market just in general in terms of, of business, uh, what's going on with in the business community, the businesses that you work with. Um, you mentioned their liquidity, so that's one thing. But mm-hmm. um, And then talk about maybe a few of the trends that they need to pay attention to that will affect their business going forward that you, you've identified? Absolutely. Uh, I think one trend, and we've all seen the articles about this, and, and no one knows the, the, the answer at this point, but, but what exactly is going to happen to the, the traditional office space, um, you know, the, the large office buildings? Um, we, we've seen some of the bigger players, the oracles of the world, Amazons and so forth, make, make some moves in Microsoft. Um, but but really, what's going to happen uh, long term to the office space with the the work from home uh, kind of movement that that we've gotten into uh, that's accelerated? It was already there, but accelerated by the pandemic. Um, and uh, a couple clients have gone to you know, one off the top of my head has gone to totally remote um, since the pandemic. Another has gone to a kind of hybrid model. Um, so, so we're definitely seeing it in our business. It's not just these, these top, uh, you know, fortune 10 companies. Um, so what's going to happen with that? And, um, uh, I I think, uh, that's going to be a key trend, uh, 
all banks and and all businesses are going to kind of watch in, in the uh, in the coming days. Um, and with that, if if the offices are, uh, are are not going away, you you can't ultimately do away with office. But um, those employees, of course, they're going home. So another trend we're we're seeing, and this is kind of on the residential side of the bank is is plenty of uh renovation projects oh. um at home um if uh if if everyone's at home the kids are doing school at home uh you want to try to work out at home too then we we've seen plenty of renovations projects for for gyms for home offices of course and just for more living space yeah. um so those have those have definitely picked up for sure uh so Ryan, let's talk about, I mean, what a business owner in your mind should look for in a bank. Um, I mean, it, we're, we're living in a digital world. So why, why is it that you, you see relationship banking is important? I know why, why is that so important, even though we're in a digital world? Uh, good question. And, uh, uh, uh being a millennial myself, I, I do I do enjoy the digital side of things. Don't don't get me wrong. Uh, digital is great, and having tools at your hand, I would say the one of the best business marriages is when you can marry up good digital tools with an excellent relationship. Mm. Uh, that that's certainly what we try to do at Renaissance Bank, and is one of the reasons I got into community banking mm-hmm. uh, because relationship. Uh, relationship is key. And, uh, what should someone do when they, when they're trying, they're looking for a bank or they're, um, especially if they're looking for, for business services, but even, even just a checking account, they should start a relationship with their, their local bank. And that's important because, um, you ultimately, and as the adage says, uh, you want to do business with those, you know, with those you can trust. Mm -hmm. And, um, I, I think the, the, pandemic did highlight the importance of relationship banking um and, and take ppp for example uh we we did receive a number of referrals a number of clients who couldn't get through uh with a larger institution uh couldn't get noticed and um needed someone to talk to mm. needed someone to walk them through an application or needed someone to just call them back and so um, and, and of course we, we served all our, our own existing clients. Um, and so, uh, when, when, when things turn South, uh, relationship is key and, uh, you know, the people are, are really want to get on the phone with someone and that's when it's the hardest. So if you've established that relationship up front, um, it can only serve you in the future. Ryan McShane folks with Renaissance bank part of the commercial banking group. Uh, Ryan, this has been great. And uh, I can't imagine that there aren't some folks that uh, hearing what you've had to say don't wouldn't want to be in touch and maybe talk about establishing a new relationship. So let's uh, give them your coordinates. How, how can they be in touch with you? Absolutely. I sit over at our Johns Creek office. Uh, that's at 11655 Medlock Bridge Road. It's right near uh, McGinnis Ferry and 141, pretty close to that intersection there. Uh, come on in and visit me. Give me a call, 678-584-7448, and I would love to talk about your business. Awesome. Ryan, thanks so much for coming on. Thank you, John. And now our guest, our next guest is Jimmy Hilliard. Jimmy is uh, an owner of Swimtime Pools. I've been looking forward to diving into this one, Jimmy. You knew I was going to come up with something like that, right? Of course, of course. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Absolutely, and you, you and your brother together own, own the company, I guess, Correct. right? And, so, and one of my sons is now part of it as well. So awesome. We're a, we're a three generation swimming pool company. Oh, that's here, that's here awesome. North. That's awesome. Yeah. Congratulations on that, because so many businesses don't make it to three generations, right? I tell people all the time, we're like farmers. We dig around in the dirt for a living. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so let's, let's, I think folks know something about what you do, but let's describe it. Swim time pools. How are you serving? Sure. So we um, primarily are a um, builder of in-ground residential swimming pools, mm-hmm. um, outdoor living spaces, which of course have become 
the thing in the last few years here in North Fulton County. Sure. Um, and um, um, so we do that. Then we also do maintenance and repairs on, on swimming pools. So if it's an in-ground swimming pool, that's our job. Gotcha. Um, we, we've obviously, we can talk about the pandemic in just as you alluded to, but let's talk about what's happened in North Fulton and for site generally and how that's affected your business. Sure. So uh, my dad started the business back in the eighties, uh, here on main street in Alpharetta. Really? Um, yep. Old Milton Parkway was not there. Uh, it was a two lane road back then and, yep. uh, and dead ended at highway nine where our office was. Wow. And, uh, and we did in those days, very basic, um, typically vinyl liner swimming pools as the, um, North Fulton, Alpharetta, Roswell, as well as Forsyth County markets have, have gotten to be much higher end, much more affluent communities than they were in my youth. Um, those projects have changed. So now most of, of what we do is um, much more custom to uh, individual uh, projects with, with spas and water features and waterfalls and built in mm. slides. So, so lots of, lots of new features that, that back in the day we did not have. It was much more standardized. Right. Right. It looked more like a pool that you would see at the YMCA. <laughs> Um, and, but today it's something that really fits the, the house and, and the, and the lot in, in a much more organic way. Absolutely. That's, that's correct. And, and so typically when I go and look at a, at a potential customer's backyard, I'm looking at the architecture of the home. We start mm. there. Uh, we, we, we look at, you know, how many, how many folks are going to be using this area? You know, is it just a husband and wife and a couple of kids or are you like me? You're from here. So you got my family and the wife's family. We got 50 people in our backyard without any problem at all. So you, you take those things into account. We also have so many more different materials now than we had back in the day. Back in the day, it was a concrete deck. Mm. Um, nowadays we have travertine. We have all sorts of natural field stones, um, different materials that we can work in really based on what the architecture of the home is, as well as the, the desires of the homeowner. Got it. Uh, Jimmy Hilliard is with us, folks. Uh, he is with Swim Time Pools, uh, and you're based now in Cumming, right? Right. And, so, and serve the North Fulton Forsyth area mostly. I, exactly. Okay. Exactly. So we, we basically run the four, Georgia 400 corridor okay. um, from Dahlonega to Buckhead. Um, ah, okay. So, there you go. Yeah. Um, but the, the, the majority of it is in the North Fulton, South Forsyth area, mm -hmm. um, both in the construction and renovation portions of our business and, and maintenance as well. Gotcha. Now you alluded to the effect of COVID. Something tells me you, we've been lucky to get you in the studio today <laughs> in terms of just how busy you and your team are right now. You know, and, and we, um, we had had made some moves in our business and then COVID hit and, uh, and they said, Oh, we're sending the children home from school. And we were like, Oh no, how are we going to make these payments? How are we going to make this payroll? Cause we got a lot of mouths to feed. We've, sure. we've got guys that have been with us for many, many years and, and are, and are a huge part of our team. And, um, and they sent the kids home and about two weeks later, we went, mm, we're going to need more people. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, you know, because we were instantly getting phone calls of, of, um, you know, I got these kids here. We, we, we got to get them out of the house. We yeah. need, we need some activity for them. We need a pool. Right. Um, so it, it, it was, it was first, uh, first a curse and then a blessing. And, mm -hmm. and, and then I guess obviously on, on other levels, a curse still, but, but nevertheless for the, for, for the pool industry as a whole, it's been amazing because, um, uh, people are now at home and, and staying home and working from home. Um, their families are at home and, and closer than they've been in, in generation. Yep. Maybe, you know, sure. um, so it, it's, it's, it's proven to be very good for us. That's, that's awesome. Now talk a little bit of maybe about, um, if I'm thinking about putting a pool in, I mean, what do I need to be thinking about when I engage you and have a conversation? Sure. So when, when somebody calls me, as I alluded to before, we generally uh, have a conversation up front about, um, the number of people in the house, how the, how they, uh, how they live their lives, how they entertain, um, 
you know, does the caterer show up when you have a party? Um, do you, um, do you entertain 30, 40, 50 people? Mm. How, how big a project is, how I'm going to lay the project out at your home, um, would be, you know, would be completely different than, than somebody else's. So, so you start the conversation there. Then once you're at the, uh, once you're doing your site visit, um, you're looking at, at, at the house. How are folks going to get from the kitchen to the swimming pool? Nobody wants to go out there without a hot dog and a cold drink. Um, so, you know, if, and if mama's got to work too hard to, to, to make that happen, then she's not going to use the pool effectively. So we want to pay attention to things like, um, how, how is the traffic going to flow from the, from the pool out? The other thing is, is we want to look at the pool from both the, or, or the pool area from, from the kitchen and the den where we all live. And we want to make sure that those sight lines are going to be, um, nice on days when you're not necessarily out at the pool. You're still enjoying the beauty of, of the backyard. So we look at, we look at all of those things and take those into account and then, um, sit at, and nowadays it's a computer. I used to draw them by hand, but, but those days have, have passed us by. We're, we're automated now. So, um, we, we actually can recreate your home, uh, with the computer and then put the pool in specifically to you with with uh, with our design team and and uh, um, so you'll know exactly what it's going to look like. Um, wow! Yeah, it 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 really has come a long way just in a very short period of time with the ability to do that. So you don't you're not going into this blind. You know how your backyard's going to look. Yeah. When when it's all said and done. Yeah. So, yeah. Wow, that's cool. Um, you know, I heard the one reason why somebody ought to do business with you, which is you make sure mom is happy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> that's what I heard because if mom is not happy, we know that no one else is happy. So that, that was, uh, I love that. Um, let, let's talk about technology, how technology has affected, um, your industry and pool ownership. It, it's dramatically different um, than it was when we first started in business. It was, you know, to control your swimming pool, the turning it on and turning it off was literally a mechanical time clock. Mm. Um, nowadays, everything is, um, well, I'm now old school because I have an app on my telephone to control my swimming pool and my spa at home. Um, my son has Alexa, and so he tells Alexa to turn the spa on, and, and the spa gets hot, and he goes out and gets in it. And then if he forgets to turn it off, he just tells Alexa when he's in the bed, oh, turn the spa off. And ah. So it's, it, it is, you know, like, like everything in, in, uh, in the residential world, it's, it's changing, changing very fast from, from that standpoint. And you're right, um, about mama being happy because, uh, over the years with our service business and our maintenance business, um, it was always primarily and still is primarily, um, the lady of the house that we, that we deal with. Um, she calls because she, she needs, a, she has an issue that she needs taken care of, uh, and we need to simplify her life and, and we're able to do that. So what, well, and talk about maintenance and upkeep, because I know that's one thing that some people in the past have looked at a pool and say, wow, I, I really didn't want to get into all the maintenance and upkeep I have to do. And how, how has technology changed in that regard? Well, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. So, um, and we'll use my pool as an example. Uh, I have an automatic pool cleaner. Let's see. It's, uh, you know, late morning here right now. So my pool cleaner is running at home, vacuuming the pool for me. Ah. Uh, my salt cell is generating chlorine. So I add uh, common table salt to my swimming pool and, and, uh, a magic box that's over by the pool equipment converts that to chlorine and kills the algae bacteria and takes care of the swimmer waste for it. And, uh, uh, occasionally I have to clean a filter. So it's, it's, it's much dramatically easier than, than the old days where you, where you had to do. We still do have to maintain appropriate water chemistry and those types of things that, that part has not changed for both for, uh, swimmer safety as well as bather comfort. Mm -hmm. Um, so those things have not changed, but, uh, so dramatically easy. If, if, if I'm, if I'm spending a, an hour or a week on my swimming pool, it's cause I want to, it's not cause I got to. Wow. Terrific. Jimmy Hilliard folks. He's with swim time pools. Uh, Jimmy, talk a little bit about maybe supply chain. Everybody's being affected by supply chain. How is that affecting your business? How is that affecting, um, your customers in terms of install time. So certainly this year has been even more than, than, than 2020 when we were in the midst of the sure enough beginnings of the pandemic or, or the, everybody was sent home. Um, 
it's become quite a challenge. Um, concrete, the most basic building material that there is, has become um, very difficult to get on a timely fashion, but we have to fight through that. Um, and we've had other issues with um, the occasional pumps and filters and things like that. We have manufacturers that are based in parts of the country where where COVID was much more prominent than it was here in the in the North Fulton, North Atlanta area. Um, but we've dealt with that. We seem to be on the we seem to be on the on the right side of that at this point. And and uh, concrete will take care of itself. It it just taken us a little while to to work through that. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, chlorine tablets, which are the traditional way that we sanitize swimming pools. Unfortunately, we had a a major fire at at a at a major manufacturer here in the southeastern United States a year or so ago, and uh, they're rebuilding that factory, but it's it's taking some time, so we're having to figure out alternative ways to work through that. Salt being one of them, mm -hmm. um, but but again, we're we're battling back, and it's uh, it we're going we're moving it down the road. Okay, awesome. So, um, you do you do you do um, maybe rehabs of pools, old pools that maybe need a fresh touch. You know, the good news for me is, is I, as I've been in North Fulton County for long enough now that, uh, that some of the stuff my dad built way back in the day, we've, we've gone back and, and, and updated and brought mm -hmm. to the, brought to the new millennium, so to speak. And, uh, uh, so that is a big part of what we do. And, and, you know, folks who had those, uh, old coping brick, old red brick that went around the top of the pool. Well, we, Pulling those off and putting some travertine down and maybe mm. breaking that concrete deck up, put some pavers down. So, mm -hmm. um, lots of opportunities there that, that, uh, to, to bring it back to the, to the new, the new age, new yeah. era. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So, um, I, this has been great, Jimmy, and I can't imagine that there aren't some folks that would like to inquire about your services and, uh, get in line sure. <laughs> to, to, uh, to get a pool installed, uh, or, 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 or get what they've got, uh, upgraded or renovated in some way. So let's uh, give them your coordinates. How can they be in touch? Sure. So the, the easiest and, and probably the best jumping off spot is swimtimepools.com, which is our website. Mm -hmm. Um, and you'll see examples of our work as well as contact information and, and, um, opportunities there to, Contact us by telephone, 770-888-3160, or um, forms there that you can fill out for us to contact you. So mm -hmm. e either of those two ways work, work very well. Terrific. Jimmy Hilliard with Swim Time Pools. Jimmy, it's been a pleasure. Thanks so much for coming in. Thanks again for having me, John. Absolutely. I'll be at your house on Saturday, by okay, the way. Okay, come on. <laughs> um, folks, just a uh, quick reminder that if you've got administrative tasks in your business that are weighing you down, if you're up at night at 11 o'clock or 12 o'clock at night doing your books, that's not a great use of your time. And I just, I don't think that's my opinion. I think that's kind of a fact. So if um, you, that describes you, I've got an answer and it involves S.E. Escobedo over at Office Angels. Now, S.E. is the chief executive angel at, S at uh, Office Angels. She's got a whole team of angels that able they're able to fly in, get the job done, and fly out. They do it on an ongoing or as-needed basis, and they've been working virtually for 21 years. So a pandemic doesn't scare them at all. Um, they do work for my business, and I couldn't do it without them. So here's what my suggestion is. Give her a call, 770-442-9246, and explain what your problem is, and she'll be glad to uh, help you. If you're shy, go to her website, officeangels.us, but my suggestion is just give her a call. She'll be glad to hear from you and tell her I sent you. And, folks, just a quick reminder uh, if you stumble on this show and you want to know where you could subscribe to it, we love to have you subscribe to the show. You, you can find us on all the major podcast apps. North Fulton Business Radio is the search term, and we would love it if you give us a great review. If you're able to on your favorite podcast app, it's not about me or Business Radio X. It's about our great guests like Ryan and Jimmy that do great work in this uh, community and uh, we want their services to be uh, found and highlighted and um, used by others that need them. So uh, you supporting the show in that way would help them and all our other guests. 
So for my guest, Ryan McShane and Jimmy Hilliard, I'm John Ray. Join us next time here on North Fulton Business Radio.